Good day to you, my friends and fellows, and welcome to a most dignified outing as we delve ourselves into the Bachelorette history of Hannah Brown. Okay, that's enough of that. Welcome back to another Bachelor Fan Take History lesson, where we remove our tinfoil hats for a moment and don our academic caps to take a look back at the rich history of Hannah Brown. From night one to night, well, wherever the heck she ends up. Whether you're new to The Bachelor and Bachelorette, or just want a refresher on how we got here with Hannah as our Bachelorette, this is the video for you. And did you see that preview? Freaking rocking out with a power romper? How on earth have we come from this? <laughs> I can't do this. To this. So without further ado, let's begin our look back at The Bachelor and Bachelorette history of Hannah Brown. Hannah Brown's journey for love all began one fateful night January 7th, or months earlier in actual reality, as she exited that fateful limo and walked her fateful walk to the fateful bachelor to eventually, fatefully, get dumped. So who is this Hannah Brown, the world asks in wonder? Yeah, but I'm a total train wreck. I just am like hoping that Colton will just like the good, the bad, and the hot mess. The hot mess express. The hot mess express in all her kookiness and craziness, gets off to an interesting start. Certainly, though, things couldn't get much worse from here, could it? Hi, I'm Anyeka. Nice, nice to meet you. To meet you. Where are you from? Alabama. Aww. Hey. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Good to see you. Do you guys know each other? Hannah arrives on a new adventure only to find an old nemesis waiting for her. Fellow Miss USA beauty queen, Kaylin Miller Keys who just so happened to place higher than her at the pageant. And it always seems like, no matter what Hannah does... Like, not being enough in, like, everything that yeah. I do. I put a lot of pressure on myself to excel, and something I totally struggle with, but I'm, like, working on it and trying to be open yeah. about it. And Kaylin is always one step ahead. <laughs> and you have beautiful eyes. So do you! I'm like, wow. Yeah. I'm like, just drawn. But there is hope yet. As the following week, it is Hannah who gets the first one-on-one, -on -one, a most pivotal opportunity to make a lasting first impression before anyone else. And surely Hannah won't squander it. What did you say? You say, let's make a toast too. Let's make a toast too. And then okay. put some words together. You just I'll put a bunch of words that sound good, that are real. They're real, real words. Okay, but... Pretty lucky. I'm not gonna forget this birthday. Good. Good, good, good. So what else? Well, this can't get any worse. Family, friend, tell me about something. We like. Like, you got it? Oh no. This is awkward. But like an awkward fumble that recovers for a touchdown, Hannah Brown grabs the ball and still gets a rose. And so, the tide rolls on. Get it? Tide. Roll. 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 Roll tide. But unfortunately, as time progresses, so does Colton's relationship with Kaylin leaving Hannah bewildered and befumbled. I'm like, befumbled. I, I mean, I don't know another word. Hashtag make befumbled a word, hashtag Webster's Dictionary, hashtag petition. So Hannah feels like if Colton's into Kaylin, how could he possibly be into her? And she commits one of the seven deadly sins of bachelor conduct, snitching. So you feel like if I even have feelings for her, I can't have feelings for you. Because you guys are, you feel like you're that different. Oh. And it works so well that Colton gives Kaylin a rose. With that, and the amount of time Colton spends listening to Kaylin's side of things, Hannah channels an inner power never before seen to mankind. The Hannah Beast. And the beast is about to come out. Is it? <laughs> and while Kaylin gets a one-on-one, -on -one, Hannah begins to claw her way back into the fight using every trick in the book, like eating something weird and eating something weird. But her greatest power of all? She's undeniably herself, and that works. So Hannah and Kaylin decide that it's not worth their time to pick apart the other person at their own detriment, and they squash their beef. 
As Hannah has said in interviews past, her and Kaylin are like oil and water. They just don't mix. But that doesn't mean they need to fight to the death. And suddenly, it's a new dawn. The clouds are lifted and the Hannah Beast is free to devour the hearts and minds of Bachelor Nation. She rocks the jungle, she masters Vietnamese martial arts, Ooh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and suddenly the drama begins to drift to other shores like Onyeka and Nicole. Bachelor Nation, once seeing Hannah as the awkward beauty queen battling with Kaylin, opens their arms and welcomes Hannah into the good books, just in time for her to get dumped. Am I ready for us? And I don't know if I'm there. Alas, Hannah was never meant to make it to hometowns. Things certainly looked great when Colton invited her to meet his family, the first lady to receive such an honor, but after donning her best Glinda the Good Witch outfit and tapping her heels three times, a voice in her ear recited, There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. And it was Colton, because he sent her home. At this point, however, public opinion had already begun to shift in Hannah's favor. While some found her cringy and awkward, others found her relatable and real. Despite her beauty queen background, she was genuine and displayed her imperfections, which people related to. And in the world of Bachelor, when you truly find realness, the audience latches onto it. And when she said this... I will not allow myself to not feel chosen every single day. We fell. But the battle for Bachelorette was just beginning. Like a sort of Game of Thrones, there were multiple players all with a chance at grabbing the crown. Kaylin, Taisha, and Hannah G were all still on the show and headed to hometowns, meaning another week or two or three of screen time to win the hearts of Bachelor Nation and the producers. But as time went on, and due to the strange narrative of Colton falling for Cassie like he did, more screen time actually became a negative for these women and their chances at Bachelorette. So much so that in the end, it was Hannah and Demi who were the top two picks. Though, side note, I'm not sure I buy that about Demi. Mike Fleiss has been known to say just about anything for a headline, cough, Khloe Kardashian cough. Kaylin received a lot of pushback because other contestants overheard her talking about the prospect of becoming Bachelorette, and folks didn't like that. Tasha and Hannah G got swept up in bad edits as Cassie became the clear focus of the end of the season. So once the battle ended, the smoke cleared, and the White Walkers went home, it was Hannah Brown who sat upon the throne of roses. And so the big question for the season has been, what Hannah will we see? Will we see the awkward Hannah from the very first one-on-one? -on -one? Will we see the Hannah Beast? Personally, I'm hoping for Power Romper Hannah. So that's it for this video on the Bachelorette history of Hannah Brown. I hope you enjoyed it, and be sure to like and subscribe if you did. Things are really coming down to the wire in this Bachelor offseason with less than a month until the Bachelorette reunion show, and just one more week after that until the Bachelorette premieres. So see you all there. <laughs> I can't do this.